Hi, I'm Owen Casey Stevens, and this is the story of how I ran a 30-minute Star Wars role-playing game play test in 12 minutes. Uh, I worked for Wizards of the Coast back in 2000-2001, and we launched the D20 Star Wars role-playing game during that time. That was the game that I worked on in the role-playing game design and development department. Uh, and since Star Wars was a big deal, the decision was made to have a lunch party, which we had at Planet Hollywood. So there was a whole lot of food that was out on a buffet, and people were invited to come and play the game, and the food was free. And we had what was supposed to be a 30-minute playtest, which we were running in 15-minute slots, to make sure that there was plenty of time, or plenty of material for the existing time, so that we wouldn't ever run out of material to run. And we had Peter Mayhew there, and Jake Lloyd, and uh, several of the artists. And... There were an elderly British couple that came up to my table. Now, I didn't know anything about them at the time. I asked about them later and discovered that they had shown up on vacation from England, and they just wanted to go to Planet Hollywood as a touristy kind of thing to do, and that they had been informed that it was closed from the general public because they were running playtests for this game, so it was just for people that wanted to play the game. And apparently the elderly, and he must have been in his late 70s, early 80s, the elderly British gentleman asked if they played the game, could they come in and they wanted to see the place, and they'd be happy to eat some of the food. Uh, and they were told, yes, that'd be fine, so they ended up at my table. So I had uh, an elderly British couple and two excited, jittery teenagers that were just wanting to do Star Wars, just, just as fast and hard as they could. So uh, I had to explain what a role-playing game was to the British couple, um, and I told them that it was a game that was a lot like the radio dramas of the old days, that we talked and, and did our dialogue and described the action, and that if there was a question of something worked or not, we had numbers on the sheet and dice that would determine whether or not something worked. And they indicated that they understood that quite well. And then I tried to explain the setup. So I was using Kenner dolls, about three inches tall, uh, and a large-scale battle mat so that everyone could see where everything was. And I tried to explain that they are facing a evil empire that is taking over large sections of the galaxy and has stormtroopers that wander out and are their main foot soldiers. And the British from says, stormtroopers? So these are space Nazis! Well, yes, yes, the, the, the Empire are essentially space Nazis. Very well, I, I understand stormtroopers, I understand Nazis. Who are we? Well, you all are, are the, the rebellion. You're the people that are trying to stop the space Nazis. Very good, so we are the resistance. Yes, sir, yes, sir, you are the resistance. And at this point, his, his wife turned to him and said, Lieutenant, perhaps you should guide us through this particular mission. And I started to realize that Lieutenant was probably not just a nickname. Um, and so he looked at his sheet, and he said, I see here on my character sheet that it informs me that I have a blaster. Is, is that like a heater? Is it a gun of some kind? Yes, sir, a blaster is a gun of some kind. Very good. And, and there appear to be med packs. What's a med pack? <coughs> well, sir, a, a med pack, it's short for medical package. Um, it's, a, it's like a first aid kit, but it works automatically, and it restores the health. My dear, you are in the auxiliary. Why don't you take everyone's med packs? And if anyone is injured, you can assist them while we continue with the fight. Uh, yes, yes, Lieutenant, I'd be happy to do that. And the boys are just wide-eyed, and, and he's, uh, very well, I, I see that we have a corridor to take, so you boys take positions here and here, we'll engage in enfilading fire, we'll catch them in a crosshair as they come through, if anyone's injured, we'll use a med pack, and what is a thermal detonator? Is that some form of explosive? Well, yes, actually. Very well, I shall arrange the thermal detonator above the doorway before we open it, in case an enemy passes through, we'll be able to bring it down upon them. Now, we were supposed to have a half hour of material, and the lieutenant immediately started running people lockstep with high-grade tactics down the corridor, through the map, annihilating everything. The boys were wide-eyed and obeyed his every word, and he would do things like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry what, is, what is that thing? What, so that's an E-web repeating blast. So that's some sort of tripod mount weapon. It's a, it's a heavy weapon. Yes, yes, it's a... And I see that we have some sort of floating lorry. Well, yeah, you've got a, a hover lift. Very well. Boys! Place the e web repeating heavy tripod blaster heater on the lorry and we shall push it along and form a light armored unit. So I'm desperately trying to keep up with the lieutenant, and it takes them about 12 minutes to utterly annihilate a half hour worth of gaming material. They did roll well, but mostly there was no disagreement, there was no wandering about trying to figure out what to do. The lieutenant, he'd look at them, this is a commando raid, boys! The difference between a commando raid and other missions is that you're not attempting to maintain any of the ground you take in a commando raid. We must remember our mission objective and move forward, ever forward! He just totally ruled the gaming table, which was awesome, and they had a great time, and after 12 minutes, I told them, well, uh, lieutenant, lady, kids, 
Um, this is supposed to be a half hour of material. We have a 15 minute slot and uh, you win. You, you, have, you have beaten the space Nazis. Uh, you were just faster and more efficient. I, I hope you all had a good time. Why, yes, this was dashed amusing. Turns to his wife. My dear, I think that the boys down at the center might enjoy this. I'm, I'm told, I, I get them to understand that when we purchase this particular amusement. Yes, Lieutenant, there will be a box set, and then later there will be larger books. Very well, I believe we shall acquire some and take them home and see whether or not they remain amusing. And for years after that, I had this warm feeling in my heart when every Sunday I would think to myself, I wonder if the boys down at the center, I, I will speak to that and tell him that he's a dastard and he shall behave himself or I shall give him what for. Um, so Star Wars... Star Wars can speak to a lot of people, and uh, apparently if you are a lieutenant, I presume in World War II, you are well prepared for the tactics of any kind of stormtrooper. And it's a fond memory of mine, and definitely falls in the category of good times.